OK, so let's say I want to solve this cubic equation. x cubed take away 15x plus 15 equals 0. Now, I've cheated, OK, and I've already found the solutions uh, to this curve. Uh, well, the three roots of where this curve, y equals x cubed minus 15x plus 15, crosses the x-axis, and it's at these three points, OK? This is really to develop the concept. So this curve, if I was to sketch it, would look something like this. So sketching this curve, going through minus 4.3, so somewhere over here, uh, 1.08 and then 3.21. So something that looks, that wasn't very good. We have another go, I'll stab that. So something like this, okay? So these are the three points of intersection with the x-axis. So that's where this equation is equal to zero, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to rearrange this equation, okay? And I'm gonna rearrange it in order to get x equals of some function of x. Now, there can be multiple ways of doing this. One way that I can see is to add the 15x to both sides. And then divide both sides by 15. So x is equal to 1 15th x cubed, so x cubed over 15, plus 1. So whereas this equation is the same as asking where is y equals this cubic equal to 0, where does it cross the x-axis, it's the same as asking where does the line y equals x intersect the curve y equals x cubed over 15 plus 1. So if I was to draw that situation underneath, I'm going to use dotted lines just to guide me here. All right, there's y equals x. Okay, and there's my curve of y equals x cubed over 15 plus 1. So that'd be going through 1 there, okay? So you can see that where this curve is crossing the x-axis is precisely the same x-coordinates of where the curve and the line are intersecting, okay? Now, let's say what we do is we turn this from an equation into a recurrence relation, okay? So, what I mean is I'm now going to rewrite this as x subscript n plus 1 is equal to x subscript n cubed over 15 plus 1. Now, if you haven't seen recurrence relations yet, then they will, you can find those videos in the sequences and series section, okay? Um, but you just need to remember, know this, that this is a rule that will allow me to get from one term to the next. That's the idea of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on this section here. Okay. So here is my x-axis. Uh, let's have a y-axis as well. So there is that bit. And there is my line y equals x, OK? So I've zoomed in on that section. And I know that this point here is this 1.085, etc. And this one here is the 3.214, etc. OK? So... If I choose a starting value, let's say between those two points, so let's try x equals 2. So if I have a starting value of x0 is equal to 2, okay, 
What I can do is I can, let's say it's there, about, I can go up to the curve, so I can substitute x equals 2 into the x cubed over 15 plus 1. That's going to give me the y coordinate of that point there. Okay? So, x1 is equal to 2 cubed over 15. So, 2 cubed over 15 plus 1. And that gives me, I'm going to put in decimals, so 1.53 recurring. Okay? So that's the y coordinate of that point there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the line and I'm going to drop down. And this point now has x coordinate 1.53 recurring. Okay? So that if I then substitute 1.53 recurring into the y curve, that right hand side, I'm going to get the y coordinate of that point there. So, qubit, divide by 15, add 1. And that gets me 1.2403358. etc. So that's now got me the y coordinate at that point. So if I go over to the line and drop my way down, this will get me the 1.24. And now I can substitute that back in to find the y coordinate of that point there. So cubing it, uh, dividing by 15, adding 1, gets me 1.1. 1.12721561. So that's now substituting in that point. That's going to be the y corner of that point. Go along to the line and down. Okay, so that's the 1.12. So what I can do is I can keep going. And you can see that what I'm going to do is I'm going to home in on this point here. Okay. So, if I was to do it one more time, x4 would be 1.09548277. And I can keep on getting closer and closer and closer, and I will home in on that result. Okay? So this is referred to as the x equals g of x method. Okay, it builds a recurrence relation by rearranging the equation you want to solve into a format of x equals some function of x, turning it into a recurrence relation, and then using a starting value to home in on one of the roots. Now you'll notice that starting at 2, homed in on this one here, it did not home in on that one, and it did not home in on that one. OK? Now, you might hypothesize, well, what would happen if I start at other points? Um, what if I started at 3? Would that give me a better chance of homing in on this one? Well, if I go up to the curve, line, curve, line, curve, line, curve, line, I'm still going to home in on this one. And what happens when I start over here? Well, I go up to the curve. Line, curve, oh no. And I diverge away. So numbers here, they're converging on that point. But if I start to the right of that point, I'm diverging away. So there is clearly um, some more important behavior going on uh, that we're not fully aware of yet. And as it turns out, what you need is, in order for this to be x equals um, some function of x that you've got to here, okay? So you've got it into that format. What you need is that if alpha is the root, then you want the gradient 
of f at the root to be between 1 and minus 1 in order for us to be able to converge upon that root. So you can see that here the curve's gradient is shallower than y equals x, and so it's homing in on this one, whereas the gradient of the curve up here is steeper than y equals x, so it's not homing in on that one. Okay? It is also steeper down here, so it won't home in on that one either. So we've got a method here that can home in on a root, but it may not be able to find all of the roots that you need. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit more investigative work of this in the next video. We're going to look at what these, um, this staircase, as we call it, how that is built up, and also look at cobweb diagrams as, as well. So you've got staircase diagrams and cobweb diagrams, how they differ depending on the situation.